Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you're watching this, and welcome to my guide to starting um, Ascension solo. Now, I haven't done a zombies guide for a while, and I apologies for, for that, but um, I've had this, this recorded for quite a long time now, and I really wanted to uh, to get it uploaded, because people that are struggling with zombies, or people that don't particularly play zombies, because they can't get around past the early rounds, um, I really hope that, that, that these videos are helpful. So, as, as previously, if you've watched my Kinder Totem strategy guide, um, early rounds, uh, it's all about stacking points, getting as many points as possible. So, with the, the pistol, you can you can shoot zombies a couple of times in the chest, and then knife them for maximum points. You have to be careful, because in the first round, it's about five five shots to kill someone. So, um, four shots and then a knife is, is a safe. I think it might be actually be five shots and a knife might be safe. Um, just to stack the points. Now, within, within the World of Ascension, um, I find it personally best to stay uh, in this particular room, the first room, for about five waves and then move all the way to the power in one go. Um, so we'll be looking to, to stack up about 7,000 points before we move on to just to guarantee that we can A, turn the power on, so unlock all the rooms, and B, get the Juggernaut at the same time. thing to note with this room is that, that sort of spinning, um, I don't even know what you refer to as spinning thing. Uh, does hit you in the face if you uh, are standing up. However, you can can crouch down um, below it. So if you are struggling or you have got a huge stack of zombies um, in the room, if you walk into the range of that when it's turned on, you will be able to uh, survive while it kills the zombies. So wave two. Now I'm onto the M14. Um, the M14 is a, is basically the number of rounds that you're on is the number of bullets it takes to kill. So this is round two. So two bullets would kill. I want to make sure I use one bullet for 10 points and then stab to get 130 points. And <laughs> continue to sort of move between window and window and just keep stacking up as many points as possible in these very early rounds because the numbers of zombies are quite low. You can take the time um, to line up the shots and, and work your way between the zombies to get the knife. Now, unfortunately, because you are knifing or because I am knifing, when you do pick up um, a power up, Unfortunately, you do get it straight away, so I didn't particularly want a nuke um, because I want to be able to get the points and the kills myself. So when I stabbed that zombie and got the nuke, unfortunately it, it ruined the, the chance to pick up some more points for the rest of the zombies. Now, I personally, I quite like buying the Olympia in Ascension um, because it does help with the strategy uh, because for the first five rounds, so it is basically a one-hit um, headshot kill, and so along with the M14 you can do find yourself particularly safe um, because you've got that that power with the, uh, the number of bullets to kill. So I've let the zombies sort of open all the windows now. Um, I normally would try and control it a little bit better than this because I don't particularly want to be running the circle strategy in this room this early on um, because I risk losing the, the kills and the points because of that spinning thing turning on. So this, this sort of circle area around this um, device is the area that you want to be running your circle strategy. You can easily lure the zombies one way or the other and basically work your way around it and keep yourself safe and you'll see me do that for the next uh, four rounds or so before I leave. So as you can see here I've heard the noise it means it's getting turned on so annoyingly it means I'm not going to be able to get many kills um, of those zombies that are left alive. I'm not going to get the points for the kills. So the downside to this room is if you don't keep them at the windows, you don't get the points that you want before they enter the room, you do risk losing a lot of points because of that. Um, I really need to find out what it is. <laughs> I can keep referring to it as this spinny thing. So round four, uh, it's four knives to kill, or three M14 shots and then a knife to kill, maximum points. But um, I'm, not really, I'm not really too concerned because I'm going to stay here for long enough that as long as I'm killing the zombies, I will uh, I will rack up enough points to, to help me out. Obviously, this is also useful if you wanted to um, try and push for that achievement to get to pack a punch weapon by round eight. You really need to make sure that every kill is almost a three shots and then knife kill, because that way you'll guarantee yourself enough points that during wave seven, once you got down to one zombie, you can go on a rampage uh, and unlock the, uh, the pack a punch room and get the the weapon upgraded at the same time. So now that I've got um, quite a few zombies spawning in, um, I'm just basically luring them into me because they're slow moving 
and then just walking around the uh, central sort of reservation area, stack up the, the, uh, the zombies for kills. I get a lovely death machine just to, to make the end of this wave particularly uh, easy. So with the with the pick, the pickups, obviously the the only one that I recommend that you avoid is the the nuke because you want to be getting the kills yourself. You want to be the the instigator of the points. So you can pick your shots, choose a knife rather than having the uh, the spinny thing take them out. Death machine. The only thing to remember with the death machine is that it does slow you down, so you can't sprint when you've got a death machine. So if you find yourself stuck in a corner or trying to run a circle strategy with a death machine, uh, remember that you have to make sure that you can kill everything because the faster zombies will run faster than you now and so they will catch you if you're not careful Ooh, and I get a bit lucky there that I wasn't paying attention um, and that zombie just sort of sideswiped me it's still a two hit uh, knockdown so you have to be very careful um, when there's more than one zombie you can have to risk getting hit once you'll see me get hit quite once quite a lot but um, as soon as you're hit and hurt you have to make sure you're nowhere near a zombie because you'll get knocked down which is why I've got that revive um, obviously to keep me to keep me safe this is the back out, this is the get out of jail area now the other one is if I got, if I got caught the other side um, what I could have done is just paid for the doorway and got out uh, and get myself an angle that way but um, the main get out of, out of jail free card is basically to run up the stairs and then the zombies will trail up the stairs after you and you can just drop down like that and uh, get yourself into a safe position. Get them back onto the strategy. Get them back, sort of circling around, trying to get the. Uh, it's a bad, bad grenade. That was the second one's a slightly better grenade. Um, you can you can use the grenades. You can use up to two grenades around. You get two new grenades each round. So uh, feel free to make sure that when you're safe, just to throw them. It does knock them down. So you could potentially keep and survive a lot more zombies because you can keep the. Uh, them crawling underneath the spinning thing. So I've got the, the insta kill now, so obviously I don't want to use that until the zombies have started spawning in on uh, on the next round. So literally just sort of stand next to it and hold off for as long as possible and then um, once it starts to flash you kind of have to take the risk and, and grab it. So the uh, the number of zombies in the map can be calculated if you wanted to. There is a I was given in one of my previous zombies here. Someone pointed out to me what the uh, what the equation was to work out the number of zombies. So as the rounds increase, the number of zombies will increase, and obviously the the number of, of bullets required to kill the zombies increases. So the game gets perpetually harder um, by design. So insta kills run out now. I'm back onto the strategy. Basically, take the hit if I need to. Try and lure them into a into a group. Try and bulk them together, picking off the ones that are in the way, and basically just stopping um, to make sure that they bunch them together. Because if I push around too soon, or if I push around too early, I'll force them, as you can see, like this here, I'll force too much of them to come around both ends, and therefore I'll set myself up a, a bit of a problem. I won't be able to get out of it. And the goal is to, is to bunch them up like that, to get them in a huge sort of crowd so that I can fire one bullet through many, many zombies, and rather than just getting 10 points a bullet pick up 40 or 50 or 60 points a bullet and as I said before when they bunch up just back away, lure them up the stairs and then drop down and uh, start the whole circle strategy again so it's just a case of controlling where the zombies are moving and keeping yourself safe if you think for a second that you're in trouble make sure that you back away and uh, get out of it basically so I've got quite a few zombies left but I don't want to kill them all, I want to uh, I want to make sure that there's a couple left alive and um, the reason for this is because I'm going to obviously go up and unlock the power now and I want to have at least two zombies alive because if you leave one zombie alive there is a chance that he could just die because if you've shot him or wounded him there is like a countdown timer on how long he'll stay alive so you've got to risk um, if you keep two alive you're guaranteed that the game will continue just, just to sort of streak out and here I am just going to show you the route that I take to get to the power because this route takes you up via the juggernaut room so that once you've got the power turned on you can jog back down again and grab the juggernaut um, and you're ready to go. So the power's on the very top floor and it's next to the rocket which indicates whether or not the uh, packer punch room is open but we'll come to that later on in the uh, in the future episodes. Uh, things to note, that floor there that I've just walked past, that is the, the area we want to be heading out to um, in a moment. I'm just going to lure the zombies away from the juggernaut room so that uh, I can go in there and grab it without them uh, cornering me because it is a dead end 
so you do have to be careful that um, when you grab it, if you have got a couple of zombies alive, that they are far enough away that they can't walk in behind you and basically corner you and, and take you down, and thus wasting the, the Juggernog and the, the revive that you've just bought. So with Juggernog, um, you're ready to rumble, and uh, I'll just head upstairs and show you where we'll pick up from, so I'll skip out uh, the next bit, but this is the corridor, we'll head out here, um, head left, right is the pack of punch, left is where we want to go, this is where we want to set up a circle strategy for the next couple of rounds, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll fade out there. So I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next part guys, so I'll put an annotation on the end, um, and uh, some tips on screen. I hope you've enjoyed, please leave a rate and a comment, and uh, come back for more. Bye for now.